Hello, this is I Do Damage, and welcome back to the channel. In this Neo 2 video, I want to talk to you about my first impressions with the game and some thoughts that I just have overall with my experience so far. I played quite a bit this past weekend on stream, a little bit off stream as well. Thanks to everyone that came out and checked out our live stream over on the YouTube channel. I'm having fun over there, and I hope you guys are enjoying the experience as well. Neo 2 has been a game that I've been pretty excited for for quite some time. I know it's been out on PlayStation for a while, but I've been waiting for it to come over to Steam. When I very first booted up Neo and created my character, I was absolutely shocked how many different options there were when it came to designing your character and kind of customizing it to how you want the character to look. There is settings beyond settings beyond settings in the character creator. You could spend probably well over an hour going through all the different options that are actually available, which is a huge improvement from Neo 1. I personally just went through and just made my character look pretty much default because I'm not super into the cosmetic types. But once I got my character in, I had made a promise to myself that I was going to try my best to use mouse and keyboard for as long as humanly possible. And I hate to break it to you, I only lasted maybe an hour. I started out with the mouse and keyboard and the controls that pop up on the screen because when you start out there's a tutorial, right? They show the buttons that you would use it as if you were using a controller, even though you're clearly using a mouse and keyboard. Just straight out of the box, the game is absolutely horrible for mouse and keyboard. I'm sure if you wanted to invest time and because you can rekeybind everything, you could totally do that and set it up to your liking and all of that. But for me, after an hour of trying to figure out what buttons did what, I just said to heck with it and went ahead and just grabbed my controller. And I, from that moment on, I really just felt right at home. I really don't have an issue, you know, when it comes to mouse and keyboard versus controller, typically in any game. On this game, it just felt more natural with the controller. Then again, it was designed for console. I want to talk about some things in Neo 2 that I absolutely love about the game, and I think should be a reason that you would consider picking up this title. First of all, the combat is just insane. It's one of those games that's, you know, it considers itself to be kind of like Dark Souls or whatever. And it is. It's challenging, but it's rewarding once you actually master that combat. I was about 20 hours into the game when I discovered how to effectively use different combos and how to combo while you're pulsing to make sure you can sustain your stamina. There's quite a bit that really does play into the combat here. You have many different weapon types, ranged and melee. On top of that, you have different stances, combos, you have ninja skills, you have magic. There's a lot really here that is offered and is really on the plate when it comes to combat. On top of combat, you have so many different monster types that learning how to effectively counter a monster and how to effectively take it down in combat without getting your butt kicked in a few hits is quite the challenge in and of itself. But once you do figure that out, you can really just blast through some of these levels, especially in co-op that we'll talk about here in a minute. One last thing I want to comment on, and this kind of feeds, I guess this is more into level design, map, and world, but it really does kind of impact combat in a way too. I absolutely love how the maps are set up, and they really cater to a high exploration experience. One thing that's really cool, and I don't see this a lot in Souls-like games, I guess. Some of them do, but on Neo 2, the maps offer a lot of different diversity when it comes to elevation and different, basically, levels of the map. There was one area where I knew that there was a hidden Kadama there, which you need to find these in order to unlock buffs that you can use. And then the more you find, the more potency these buffs gain. But anyway, I knew that this was on the map because there was a blip on my map indicating it was there. And there was like four different elevation or different like levels that it could have possibly been on it could be underground on the overworld or up on this house or the house had i think two floors on it but it's just it's crazy how much there really is when it comes to maps instead of it being just a flat level you can also drop down from above enemies and do sweet execution moves as you drop in and land on their head with your weapon. So the elevation that this that are on these maps is, is really, really sweet. Map design and level design is definitely a high point of Neo 2 for me. Another thing that I really, really appreciate about Neo 2 is the multiplayer aspect. The online co-op is definitely a blast. However, it does make the game significantly easier. The way the multiplayer works is you can offer up one Ochoco Cup to summon in another player into your game. And you can have up to two visitors come into your game and help you out. So it's up to three player co-op. That is for the story and you can also sign up to be summoned into other people's games to help out with their story missions as well. But where the multiplayer and combat really shines is the expeditions. The expeditions on Neo 2 are unique in that you have a shared 
basically think of it as like a resource type bar that when it's fully depleted, you have to fail and you can go back. You, you can decide if you want to abandon the mission or summon back to the last rest shrine. But whenever someone dies, a timer starts to tick down that is a segment of that bar. So as soon as you see a player in your party go down, you want to go ahead and try to res them immediately. It's just a tap of a button. You don't have to sit there and like res for five seconds or anything like that. It's literally just instant, which is just, it's great and super easy to do. You just got to be cautious of what's going on on the battlefield. But what's really cool about these expeditions is I can group up with someone that's lower level than me. And it scales in a way that the loot that I'm still getting from that mission is actually up to my level. So everyone in the multiplayer session is actually getting rewarded and getting loot for them. One complaint I do have with multiplayer on Neo 2 is let's say that I am playing with a buddy and we want to just co-op the game all the way through together. You can't actually do that. You can only be summoned in to help someone else if you've completed the mission that they're requesting help for. So let's say that me and Soul, Souls is who I played the expeditions with the other night, which was a blast by the way. Shout out to you for that. Let's say that me and Souls both want to start out on the very first mission. We want to co-op it together. I can't actually do that. One of us has to actually have beaten that mission before to then be able to be summoned in to help out. There's a few more things I want to talk about with Neo2 here. And if you're sticking through the video for this long, thank you so much. I really tried to keep this video short and sweet, but there was a little bit here that I really want to talk about. So I appreciate it. Let's go ahead and jump in and talk about skill trees. Skill trees on Neo2 are definitely a welcomed addition. Me coming from an action RPG background where skill trees are just super important to your character's build. This is definitely a welcomed addition to the game. I do have a few critiques. Basically the skill tree has, every skill in the game has its very own skill tree. So each type of weapon has its own skill tree. Each mechanic that you can do in the game from shifting into your demon form, your magic, your ninja skills, and your basic samurai skills, they all have a skill tree. But when you go into these, let's go ahead and talk about the axes because that's my main weapon I use. You're going to quickly notice that each skill tree is basically the same, just they affect different things. So what I mean by that is all the weapon skill trees have just a basic skill tree on the right side that's going to just buff up that specific weapon. The top part of the tree is going to buff up your high stance, the left side is for mid stance, and then the bottom of the tree is for your low stance. This is pretty much true in general. There are a few nodes in there that don't require that specific stance. But this approach to having these skill trees largely the same, at first thought I just wasn't super impressed with it, if I'm being honest with you. I don't like to change stances a whole bunch, but once I figured out how the combos and how really changing your stance can really improve your gameplay and really help elevate you to that next level in terms of just being better at combat, these skill trees really started to kind of fall into place and make more sense to me. So at the end of the day, the skill trees are a welcomed addition. There's quite a bit there. There's only one other complaint I have with them. There's certain nodes that'll say that certain skills get added fire damage to them. It doesn't tell you what skills they are. It, it literally just says certain skills. I don't know what the point is in not telling the player <laughs> what skill it is, but definitely an interesting choice. I, you can see I put points into it just because why not? They're kind of just dump points for me anyway. But yeah, that's skill trees. It's nice to see that there's something there and something to keep working towards. Last but not least, I want to talk a little bit about loot and itemization within Neo 2. Again, I come from that action RPG background where loot itemization is key to really having a lot of impact on your character. In Neo 2, I can definitely tell the game is more focused around its combat and trying to live up to that Dark Souls difficulty type of game. This isn't to say that the loot is just absolutely terrible in the game. There are some exciting affixes and some things that I do like with the loot. But really, overall, I feel like the itemization could be just a little bit better. And what I mean by this is when you're, when you're going through your, your inventory, you're looking through the loot that you've collected from your journeys, you're going to be looking primarily at the main stat. At least for me anyway. When it comes to armor, I'm looking for whatever has the highest level of defense. And then when it comes to weapons, no matter what type of weapon it is, I'm looking for what does the absolute most basic damage. 
Now, this was my early impressions, and once I spent more time kind of looking at the Lou and thinking a little bit more about how the, all the itemization works, it does make a little bit more sense when you think about the different types of weapons and how the different types of combos work. Because I've talked to a couple different people that are playing Neo 2, and we all prefer just totally different weapons just based on the way that the weapons actually play. So with that in mind, you then need to not only look at, for weapons, the base damage, you need to also pay attention to the weapon type. For example, the axes by default will just have more damage on them than, say, a sword. That's probably why I lean more towards axes, just because I like to see that higher damage number on there. The game does offer itemization past these two base stats, defense and damage, but there's so many different stats you can find in the game that it almost at a certain point kind of starts to feel like I'm just collecting garbage, basically just to go break down so that I can just craft my own items. But keep in mind, you can actually take any item that you get, you can take it into the blacksmith and you can reforge the majority of the stats into something that you would, are actually looking for. So it's nice to have that option. Another plus side that I like to see on loot is the gear sets. While they're not necessarily required, at least early game in my experience, they're nice to have for sure. Then again, I'm only on Act 2. I've played maybe 20 some hours, so I maybe when I get higher level and stuff, I think I'm around level 45 or 50, but maybe once I get higher level and further into the game, loot and itemization will really start to shape up and make even more sense. But early impressions were there's just so much that it just feels oversaturated with loot. That was my early impressions anyway, but I'm looking forward to see what's to come. There's so much more in Neo 2 that I just love, and I could just honestly talk about this game forever, but I don't want to do that to you. I wanted to just highlight some of the main things that I like and don't like about the game. Just talk about some of the things that I enjoy and some of the critiques I do have on Neo 2. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Feel free to share with all your friends. Make sure you hit that bell notification to get notified when I post new weekly videos. Also, we're now streaming on... YouTube primarily on Fridays and Saturdays in the evening. I do have a playlist of upcoming streams. Make sure you go on there and set those reminders so you're notified when I do go live. If you watch this video all the way through, sincerely thank you. That means the absolute world to me. I want to give you an added bonus. I'm going to be streaming on Friday, February 12th, starting at 6.30 p.m. If you come over to that live stream and you say Damage Crew 100, I will give you a free 100 loyalty points to go towards our new loyalty system for the live stream. There's some different rewards that you can claim using loyalty that you can find over on the Damage Crew Discord. If you haven't joined our community over there, I welcome you to come in, join our ranks, be a part of just a bunch of nerds that love video games way too much. We also have other social medias you can feel free to check out down in the description below. I thank you so much for your continued support, and I look forward to more videos and more streams in the future. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.